have you ever wondered the real driver behind successful organizational change? Rise and shine leaders, this is Glenn Guyton, keynote speaker and workplace trainer. It's time for our executive coffee break. I've got my beverage in hand. I hope you have yours too. They say you can't choose your family, but you can choose your workplace culture and your beverage. Today I'm drinking water, just good old water. Hey, leadership matters, so you might as well get good at it. Today we want to talk about the magic question. You know, you all like magic, right? Uh oh, it's magic. It's gotta hold on you. It's gotta hold on you. It's gotta hold on you tonight. Hey, we all like magic, but as I think about organizational change, there is a magic question that we have to answer if we want that change to stick. In my journey across various organizations, one question stands out as a beacon of transformation. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? What do I get out of this? This isn't about selfishness. It's about understanding and alignment. Every team member yearns to know how change will affect them personally and professionally. Today, we'll explore how to leverage this question uh, to create more powerful buy-in, for organizational change, and we all want buy-in. Doesn't matter what generation we are in, if we are a baby boomer or a millennial Gen Z, we all want buy-in. We we, we want to know what's in it for me. Even even us Gen Xs, we're, you know, we're, we're tough, but we want to know what's in it for me. So, as we think about this, and we, as we think about organizational change. You understand that for change to be embraced, it must be seen as a vehicle for personal and collective growth. What's in it for me, maybe even what's in it for us, bridges the gap between skepticism and commitment by spotlighting the benefits of change. People want to know why we are doing these things. What's in it for me? How is this going to impact my career? How is it going to impact my daily work life? It doesn't matter if we're talking about uh, moving locations. It doesn't matter if we're talking about diversity, equity, inclusion. It doesn't matter if we are uh, talking about maybe even changing some furniture in the, the office. People want to know what's in it for me. I, I like my desk. I like this uh where I was sitting. I like facing the window. Uh, I like the location that we're, we're in. There are many things that run through people's mind anytime you upset the apple cart. A friend of mine on social media was saying, hey, if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, that's the attitude of many people, right? Hey, you messing with stuff. It was working fine until you start messing with it. Why are you, why are you screwing it up? We had it good here. And so, uh, change will impact people in different ways. People want to, is, are going to want to know what's in it for them before they start really accepting the change is going to happen. So let me give you five strategies to think about as you answer that question, what's in it for me? So five, good round number. Number one, communicate clearly. Uh, and, and I've talked about this in a number of different videos about uh, impacting change. Communication is always the beginning point. But start by articulating the vision and objectives for the change. Ensure every team member can connect the dots between the change and its impact on their work life. That's what. That's the crucial part. They want to be able to connect the dots. Hey, this is how it's going to impact me. This is how I'm going to uh, be better because of this change. Now, those employees that can see the benefits, they're already connecting the dots. So you're gonna to have to connect the dots with those that are most resistant to the change. Like, yeah, how is it gonna impact me? You know, and especially, you know, those that have maybe been in the workplace for a long time, they're really gonna know, hey, I'm at the top of the hill right now. This change is really gonna affect me negatively. That's why people reject change because they feel like they're gonna lose something. Hey, you're gonna take something away from me. I, I, I had all of this and now you're taking it away from me, giving it to someone else. No. Connect the dots to people to let them know how this is going to be benefit them uh, in the workplace. Number two, showcase benefits. Highlight both immediate and long-term benefits, whether it's professional development, a more cohesive team, or a healthier work environment. Make the advantages clear. Clarity, clarity. Let them know 
this is the good this change is going to do in the workplace. And if it's not going to do anything good, maybe you don't need to be changing. Number three, have a personal approach. Uh, understand that motivation varies. Some might be driven by career growth, others by work-life balance improvements. Tailor your messages to address these diverse motivators. And you know, this again goes across all generations. You know, we've said, uh, people have said, oh, it's, you know, millennials, oh, they're wild and they're soft. Uh, and millennials, they're running things down there in their 40s, uh, mid 40s, they get old. Um, you know, we can, we can say it's the younger generations that whine and complain, G Gen Z, you know, all these things. But you know, baby boomers, you, you all like some personal stuff too. You got your personal preferences. You don't want people moving your things around. So don't act like it's just one generation. No, it's it's all of us, except for, again, Gen X, because we, we, we're tough. We're rough and tough. We were latchkey kids. We can handle anything. But no, all of us uh, need need to feel like we belong in the workplace. Yeah, it, before belonging was a thing, we need we needed to feel like that. So have a personal approach. Know what's motivating those on your team. Number four, involve everyone in the, in the process. Collaboration, yes. Participation fosters ownership. Encourage your team to contribute ideas on how to implement change, thereby increasing their investment in the outcome. Get everybody involved. Hey, we are in this thing together. Um, say that, hey, we're in this thing together. So get their input, uh, get their feedback on the change, uh, see what their preferences are, learn the potential pitfalls, but get them involved. Help them own the change that's coming. Don't just try to muscle it by yourself. Number five, celebrate milestones. Recognize and celebrate small victories. This reinforces the value of change and keeps morale high. Yeah, you, you got to celebrate. You don't, you don't just get from here to there uh, without s some checks along the way. Uh, when I was in the, the, the Air Force, at the Air Force Academy, we had survival training, uh, SEER, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. And we had to navigate with this compass. And we had to go from point A to point B. But you don't just go from point A to point B without checking what's going on in between. You have some waypoints. You have some, some navigational cues that you have to pay attention to. And so you don't just start on a journey and say, hey, well, I'll let you know when you get there. No, you, you do have to let people know when they get there. But imagine if you're driving from L.A. to Houston. Uh, you don't just kind of set it and forget it. You're like, okay, I'm, on, I'm driving on I-10 East. I know in a couple of hours I should be in uh, Phoenix. Uh, you know, in a few more hours, you know, I, I, I'll be driving, you know, I'll hit El Paso. You know, you, you, you'll have some waypoints and some, and some, some places where you, where, where you stop. And then when you get in Texas, you're going to stop at Bucky's and get yourself some beaver nuggets or some beef jerky. And you'll say, hey, this is wonderful. Uh, you know, when my family and I travel from San Antonio to Houston, we stop at Bucky's. It's, it's kind of like a, a ritual. It's, it's a place of celebration, a place of refreshment. Refreshment. We can get some snacks, uh, go to the cleanest bathrooms that they ever had had in the entire world. But we can stop. We stop at, stop at Bucky's. It's a way of celebrating, you know, a a point in time as we get to our journey. So what's the Bucky's in your change process? If you don't know what Bucky's is, look it up. But you have to have a place where people can refresh, refuel, they can be reinvigorated as you go through the change process. Don't just take take them through through change and just keep pushing, 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 pushing. And leaders, I know you want to push because uh, you're highly motivated, uh, but you're burning your people out. And you're doing too much, and some of you are just unhappy, so you just push your people because you're unhappy. Don't do that. Uh, let your people breathe a little bit as you go through this change process. Celebrate milestones. Have key points where you stop and reflect. Hey, how are we doing? What do we need to, to do to adjust? Again, if you're going to drive from L.A. to to Houston, you're not just going to do it nonstop. You're going to have to stop. You're going to have to refuel. Uh, you, you're going to have to clean your windshield wipers off. You may have to make an adjustment if there's a, a road closure or something like that. So do the same thing on your change journeys in your, your organization. So as I wrap up today, I want to challenge you uh, with this. I challenge you to Apply this approach in your next change initiative. Start conversations with your team about the benefits of the upcoming changes. Ask them directly, what's in it for you? Yes, ask, ask them that question. What's in it for you? And listen, their answers will guide you in creating more impactful and meaningful organizational changes. See, hey, see what they say. See what they, what they think. How do you think this change is going to 
impact you? What's in it for you? And if they say nothing, well, you probably need to examine what's going on. Either you haven't clearly articulated the reason for the change or the change is a bad idea. Idea. It could be a bad idea. You might not need to change. I do think change is essential to growth, uh, so we don't want to just not change because people are afraid. That's not the reason, but we we do want to listen to our teams, listen to our employees, and figure out what we can do better uh, in order to make the change stick. And again, realize that we as leaders often have blind spots. We shift stuff up over because we're excited, but that doesn't mean everyone else on our team is excited. So keep that in mind. So as we close today, let's not forget the strength and perseverance that it takes to lead with empathy and inclusivity. Better leaders get better results. So to every one of you leading the charge for a more supportive and engaging workplace, I leave you with this. Stay bold, stay inspired, and remember that your actions today shape the culture of tomorrow. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. My name is Glenn Guyton.